we go. Thank you. Who's that? Shiwi. Thank you, Shiwi. Land cruising adventure. You can hear me at last. My word. My word. <laughs> the things you go through when you're just trying to be helpful. Um, anyway, well, we're well over uh, start time and I need to have a word with YouTube about um, their start times on how it all works. But it's all new, this technology, and I thought it would be a bit of fun, uh, although I don't feel at this very moment in time, it would be a bit of fun to do a live stream and go through uh, two great new products. Let me just turn this down a bit because it's uh, interrupting me. Um, I can see the chat now. Um, so, yes. Right, let's get back to basics. Montaigne, the Halogen 45. That's what we're going to be talking about. A nice traditional new 2019 rucksack from them. And a rather sexy Trailblazer 44, another 2019 product with some very interesting quirky little features. So I think before I go any further, if anybody wants to say hi, I'll um, just welcome you into the chat. Uh, the numbers are increasing steadily, so I know there's people there. So thank you very much for joining me and taking the time. Um, as you probably would have guessed, there's been a few technical problems in starting. But hey, that's technology for you, isn't it? Uh, so I thought, really, we would give live streaming a go. I've done a lot of videos and obviously a lot of podcasts. And thank you if you're a regular podcast listener uh, that I thought I'd give the live streaming a bit of a try. And it is certainly a trial to say the least. But anyway, everything seems to be working. I've got all the cameras working, the lights are all working, I've even got the rucksacks. So unless there's anything anybody wants to ask me now. Hi Philip. Um, hi Philip. If anybody, unless anybody wants to ask me anything now, what I'll do is I think I'll go through like a basic presentation of the, the halogen to start off with. Um, if there's anything that you want to ask as we go along, then do fire a question in the chat room. Uh, if I pick it up and answer it, I'll do my best. But as I say, we have uh, Gary from Montaigne also in the chat room at the moment. He's there ready with documents galore to answer any technical questions you might have about uh, Montaigne products, these products or Montaigne products generally, I, I trust. But if we can try and keep the chat around these two products, that would make life an awful lot easier for everyone. So let us start with the... Halogen 45. Now, Montaigne are, are well known for their race packs and the mountain gazelles They'll all love them and use them. And those are packs really up to sort of the 30 litre mark. When you start going over 40 litres, then it's not really the type of pack that uh, the adventure racers would use. They would definitely be much lighter and much smaller capacity. You then start getting into more general use packs, uh, alpine packs, backpacking packs or whatever. Now these two packs really have interested me uh, for numerous reasons, particularly the Trailblazer 44. But we'll go through this one which is more of a traditional pack uh, in many ways in the way it's constructed and the features. So let us start I'll come on to this in a moment. There's a reason that I have a French stick sticking out the side of this bag. So let us start with a few of the basics then. So from a material point of view, this is a durable pack. It's a great multi-featured pack for people with different back lengths. I'll come on to that shortly. And material-wise, it's your sort of traditional tougher material. So you're looking at Raptor 210 denier for the main body and then uh, Endurance 420 denier for the base where it gets dragged around a bit. But so let's start off looking at the top of the pack. Okay, sorry, the top, the front of the pack, what am I talking about? So um, as you notice straight away, there is a front pocket here with a long vertical zip, which is great. The pocket isn't a stretch material and it obviously isn't breathable. So as useful as that pocket will be for stashing stuff on a daily basis, and as you go through the day, obviously if you've got wet equipment, it isn't going to be airing and drying uh, in there. But still a useful, pack, uh, it's a useful pocket to have all the same. Now Montaigne have done some really nice little features on these new designs, and everything seems to tuck away. 
uh, for quite a nice presentation. So there's your, your ice axe or your walking pole loops and they would hook onto there and then slide through this particular um, attachment point here. When it's compressed, obviously it locks it tight and you can uh, do the adjustment here to tighten up the base of the pole so you make sure you don't lose it. Lose it. Now around the pack, particularly on the side with the French stick, we have what's called, uh, Montaigne of very subtly called, a baguette pocket. I'll say that again, a baguette pocket. So should you find yourself ever in France, you have somewhere to store your baguette. Now seriously, it's a quite a nifty, novel little idea actually. You have your standard traditional uh, pocket, side pockets at the bottom there. And then above that you have a, a separate mesh which actually is a tube, if you like. So therefore, when you have taller items, it could be a baguette, or it could be something like uh, a, a, a tarp or a shelter of some kind, or even your walking poles, and you want to be sure that they're more stable uh, than they would be just tucked into the bottom pocket, you can slide them down the baguette pouch, and that gives you a double length pocket. Now, obviously on certain American packs, there is that feature of having a, a tall pocket on one side of the rucksack, and uh, it is proved to be very, very valuable and a very useful uh, pocket, particularly as, obviously, when you're backpacking, the shelter is the last thing to come down and the, the first thing to, to go up. The only thing I would say about the, the pocket, the stretchability, it isn't quite as, as, as copious as I would like it. Um, so you'd certainly get a baguette in there or a, a tent wrapped in a very tight tube or tent poles, but you, it, isn't a, 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 it isn't a very capacious pocket. So, from a, a stretch point of view, in fact, let me give you a ridiculous close-up. There you go. So, from a stretch point of view, it's, it's only that sort of big. And then you've got the bottom pocket there as well. Now, let's pop that back. <coughs> so, you have the... Uh, the Side compression straps, which are always useful, fairly lengthy, so that enables you to perhaps put a sleeping mat, should you have a sleeping mat down there, or as I say, something a bit thicker in the, in the baguette pocket or in the side pocket that you want to stay safe, and that's on both sides. At the bottom part of the pack, there's a further two compression straps, again with a good, a good um, loop on them for tucking in your sleeping mats and so on. And they ping off, and unusually, there is a bottom entry into the pack. So you can access the pack from the top or the bottom. Now, in some packs, in some packs, there would be a shelf there that would separate the top from the bottom, but there isn't in this particular pack. It's a straightforward bottom entry. Um, I'm not sure how useful that would be, um, but obviously everybody packs their packs differently. And I'm sure uh, if you ever need to access the bottom of the pack without emptying out the contents, perhaps when it's pouring with rain or something similar, then you can easily get to those items at the bottom. Now at the top of the pack we have what Montaigne I believe call the buddy pocket. So there's a good five litres, four or five litres in there. So you can actually get into the pack. And as you'll notice here and here, there are lash points. You can see that. Yes, you've got to see that. Lash points there and there. So you could actually put some shock cord across there should you wish to do so. Or some Velcro straps or whatever to perhaps lash your jacket across so your jacket doesn't have to go inside and uh, it can stay attached to the pack. Now coming around to the back of the pack, we have the air mesh back system. Now the both packs have got the same system but there's a different patterning to them and the air mesh as you notice probably see that yeah you can see that there's channels here so water drainage from either perspiration or obviously heavy rain can actually uh, drain out of the pack which is quite good. I'll talk about the shoulder harness first before I come on to the adjusting system. Shoulder harness padding quite good on the padding let's have a look on the other camera ah, bring that over so you've got a reasonable padding on the shoulder harness there um, with the upper cinch straps as well which obviously draws the weight closer to the, to the back which is what you want. 
And down further down, you have the quick release system that uh, Montana pioneered in the last few years, which is extremely effective. Um, and on this side, you have a little daisy chain, which tends to work out quite well because on the right-hand side of the pack, just underneath there, you have the hydration slot. There we go. Uh, hydration slot there, can you see that? And then the hydration tube can come down the harness and go under the elastic through the daisy chain and obviously tucked away where you want it. The chest harness can be moved to anywhere on the daisy chain to suit you. And what I did forget to mention is I, uh, this is a, this is a um, unisex pack. Uh, so obviously uh, the adjustment tends to be required for the female form as much as the, the guys. Um, on the hip belt itself, we have uh, a, reasonable, a reasonable pocket there. Uh, that'll take, I don't know, probably a decent camera or so, a little bit of stretch on the bottom material of the pocket. Again, the hip belt, let's have a look at the foam. The hip belt's got a reasonable padding. Stiff, it's, it's stiff. It's just right, really, for a 45-litre pack, I'd say, really. But the, one of the Montaigne features here is that the hip belt itself runs all the way through the belt and attaches down here the base of the the pack which draws it nicely against your hips where you need to carry the weight. So going back to the adjusting back system. Now, um, very simple to do and as back system adjustments go, uh, not particularly heavy so you're not carrying a heavy adjusting system as to, like a lot of many of the older packs used to have. They used to have an adjusting system, but it was so heavy to carry that it added another kilo to the pack. And they provide a very easy guide here from small to large. Let's bring that other camera in again. So you have, it's obviously set on the large system now, and it goes down to small there. Now the back length that the range that the harness wool and the back system covers is uh, the smallest is 16 inch back to a large 21 inch back. Now I am 6 foot 2 and have a 21 inch back and it just sits nicely for me which works well. But to change it you literally just pull the Velcro up, break the seal, slide the pack down to where you want it and then clip it back down again and that's it done. The reason that is quite useful is if, if you have uh, different members of the family sharing a pack, that's quite useful. If you are, in the Trailblazers case, if you're running to work and then walking back, you might want to change where the hip belt settles on you or your hip, your waist. Um, if you're part of a walking group, you might want to uh, have a, a system where you can adjust the backs to suit, and particularly Duke of Edinburgh. It's that type of thing that works, works really, really well. Okay, so that's the back adjusting system. That's the hip belt. Um, oh, before I go inside, any questions? Oh, lots of questions. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I can just see Nick on Dartmoor, Land Cruisers, Newton, Mr. Newton, Gary Walton, uh, Gary Walton, Gary Walton, and what I said. The material on the side pockets are stretch mesh, but not that. Oh, Gary is obviously from Montaigne. Sorry, Gary. Um, extra reinforced. No, Gary's answering all the questions, which is great. So I will now go to the inside of the pack. Firstly, uh, we have the lash strap across the top, which is quite useful. Again, you'll notice there's compression here, there's compression at the side, and there's compression at the bottom as well. So the whole pack, once it's full, you can tighten it down and it's not having that sensation of carrying a bag of shopping. Um, the, the top is a quick release system, uh, so if you've got gloves and it's cold or on a rainy day, you just literally pull those two sections apart and the whole thing comes apart. Now, obviously inside here I've stuffed a couple of pillows. I'm not going to sleep very well tonight. Right, now, let's see, can you see there? 
What I've done, in fact, I'll go over to Rucksack Cam. So what I've done is, down the hydration slot, put a Neo Air. That's a medium Neo Air that's gone down there, so that's the one that goes down to my, my knees. And that goes down the hydration slot. Now, the hydration slot goes almost to the bottom of the pack. So it's a reasonable depth, um, and it's something really I wish rucksack designers would pay a little bit more attention to and actually make that pocket go right to the full length, to the bottom of the pack, because it would be really useful for people like me who want to store their sleeping mat down there and not use the hydration system. The, I personally prefer hydration to sit on the top of the pack at the, uh, when I'm hiking. And for that reason, there is a Velcro tab here, which sits at the top of the pack, and I can't do it with one hand, yes I can, here we go, um, there we go, so that is useful for obviously attaching your hydration system to, or perhaps um, maybe a roll top bag with other valuables in there that you might want to keep separate, or your camera gear, or whatever it may be. I uh, don't think there's any other surprises here, um, apart from obviously inside the lid, uh, underside of the lid, we have a, a security pocket or a safety pocket, which is um, obviously enables you to tuck away your, your wallet and keys, and obviously a key fob holder there as well, which is useful for holding the key fob and um, keeping that safe. Right, let me just change cameras again. So I don't think I'll say any more about that. I think Gary is answering the questions. Before I put that away, there's about, oh, I meant to say, there's about a 30 second delay between what I'm doing and you seeing it on YouTube. So uh, allow us 30 seconds or so to see the question uh, to answer the, uh, the point you might be making. Now, and in which case, before I put this back on the shelf, is there anything else that anybody would like to see uh, relating to the Halogen 45? Hi there from, from sorry, K Keitia? Keitia from Germany. Uh, nice to uh, have you join us. Um, there's one question there about the pressure on the zip on the front pocket uh, when the pack is loaded up. There's, there is a bit of a gusset on the, on the zip. Uh, sorry, I've got to the overhead. There is a bit of a gusset on the, on the zip. There's more um, space inside there than you might think. It's not, it, would, it would easily take something a couple of inches thick when the pack is packed. The other thing is the actual reinforced stitching and sealing of the strap, the compression strap that comes round is just inside both sides of the panel there. So when you compress the pack, it is compressing the pack from here, not from there. Let me just get that other camera and see and make that a bit clearer for you. So the compression starts here and there those two places. So when you're compressing the pack, it's actually pulling the, the, taking the pressure around the pack rather than taking it from this seam here, which would then leave this exposed and put pressure along the seam there, which would cause problems. So I think it's not the biggest pocket in the world, but it certainly would take uh, a reasonable amount of content without uh, upsetting the balance of the pack. Any other questions while I'm hovering? No? Okay, that's good. So, I'm not going to bother putting my pillows back in. I'll put them back on the bed tonight, I think. So, that is the Halogen 45. Um, I'll put it on. I'll just change the back system to my, my size <coughs> so you can see it on. The one thing I didn't mention um, is 
Although I mentioned the back length is suitable for back lengths 16 inches to 21 inches, which is the large. Let's put that clip there. The waist, which is the one thing about rucksack design, when they design the back system, there we go, the back system, what tends to happen is you've got to watch this area here. So the, the belt, obviously the wider the girth, <coughs> somebody built for comfort, not for speed, the wider the girth, the hip belt and the access to the hip belt pockets tends to go backwards, which makes it harder and harder and harder to access the pockets. So they've compromised and got, I would say, a good range on the waist and it should suit people from 32 inches to the very large 46 inches. I'm about a 34 to 36 waist, so this on me is, I feels just about right. I can access the pocket, but what I can't do is particularly access the, I can, I can just get back in these side pockets either side. Yeah, I could just ac access, but it doesn't feel particularly comfortable, which is where we come onto something on the Trailblaze, which I think you'll, uh, you'll appreciate. Any other comments? Um, no. Okay. So, let's now pop that off and come to the trailblazer. Now, as I said before, Montaigne have got a pedigree for fast and light. And their fast and light packs up to about the 30 litre mark are certainly very popular with the adventure racing uh, extreme uh, athletes, should we say, uh, long distance runners, etc, etc. And the harness that they've developed the, uh, what do they call it, the Covalent Harness is very popular and so the packs for that marketplace suit the job nicely. Now when you start going above the 40 litre mark, 45, 50 litres plus, you're crossing over into more general use, should we say, more general backpacking, weekend hiking, uh, people that want a, a pack that's big enough for a weekend but not 60, 65 litres that's going to kill you too and spoil the fun really. So the Trailblazer 44 uh, comes in at a lovely weight of below one kilo of 980 grams, which is what, 35 ounces. I forgot to mention actually that the Halogen 45 comes in at uh, 1325 grams, which is 47 ounces. So it's what, another 340, 350 grams heavier. So they've taken the um, Fast and Light series that they did last year, the smaller packs, and developed this larger pack. And I think this larger pack will appeal to people that want to go lightweight generally for a hiking weekend and that uh, may have aspirations to do longer trips and try and keep the weight down. As I say, as a starting point, um, uh, 980 grams, it's brilliant. However, it's the material really that is the key aspect of where some of the weight is saved. Uh, you're looking at uh, their Raptor Cross light material for the majority of the pack. That's a 70 denier compared to the Raptor uh, 210 denier on the halogen. And then on the bottom of the pack, you've got 210 denier uh, resistance uh, fabric. Well, obviously, things that uh, gets dragged on the ground there. And it's half as thick as the endurance th fabric, which is 420 denier on the halogen uh, 45. Um, I'm quite excited about this pack for numerous reasons. Um, I'll tell you about prices as well at the end, because that's actually the, the kicker, I have to say. So let's look at the front of the pack. First of all, I think it's a very attractive pack. We all like to, like to look smart, we're on the, on the hill and whatever, and something that looks sleek and makes us feel like we're going faster <laughs> It's greatly appreciated. Um, you've got the sort of traditional, shall we say, ice axe loops or walking pole loops, uh, and we've got a couple of Mountain King Trailblaze carbon poles tucked in there, and as you can see they sit nicely uh, and they work well. But one of the nice features I really like about the new designs is a lot of the... the accessory points 
and bits that normally hang off the pack actually tuck away and make the pack look even more tidy and sleek as it does so. The attachment points here and here um, they will they can come off they're just a, a case of untying a knot there on the on the shock cord and remove that from the daisy chain. There's nice nice let's bring that other close-up camera in. There's a nice daisy chain here um, where you can obviously should you wish to do do so move this attachment point up and down or you can um, perhaps zigzag some shock cord across here if you want uh, additional storage capacity. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice little feature which is, um, is I'm sure is, will be appreciated. Uh, let's go back to that one. So, um, once you've got those tucked out of the way, you have one of my favourite features on a rucksack, a generous mesh pocket and you can see my hands getting in there quite nicely. Unfortunately it doesn't go to the full depth of the pack, it only goes to here. It'd be lovely if it went a bit deeper but all the same that's good enough for waterproofs and the basics that you need when you're obviously tackling the hill on a wet day or if you've got wet clothing or whatever and we all like to tuck it somewhere where it's potentially getting uh, drying slightly. Now between that pocket and the main pocket there is another pocket here. Now this one I would say once you've got items in the mesh section and once you've got uh, um, the, the pack full is going to be tight. It's, there isn't much gusset in this pack, in this pocket to allow... Well if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong tonight isn't it? It's going to go wrong on your first time. Let's face it. Can you, anybody just confirm in the, uh, in the chat room whether you've got the audio back or not please? I'd be uh, very grateful on that. Before I continue on, any second now? Well, let's assume that the audio is back. Um, I'm not too sure how far back I need to go, but what I was saying basically is that this wand pocket, um, the wand pockets on both sides of the rucksack allow you easy access, whereas if you're slightly wider on the waist, with something like the halogen or traditional rucksack, then the pockets tend to get further and further back, which to get them make them more awkward to unzip. So, um, back to the side of the pack. Uh, lovely compression, lightweight compression straps, as we see, and uh, obviously uh, there's enough slack in the strap to enable you to put a, a sleeping mat or perhaps a, a, a bivy or a shelter or whatever, and tuck it down there and, and keep that tight, which is nice. Now you'll see that it's um, a roll-top enclosure on the top of the pack, and uh, this has two ways of closing, clothing, clothing, closing even, and, and the um, closing system comes drops down either side as you saw or should you be restocking somewhere there's a good neck to the pack you might just want to close it like that like so let's just do that one so you've got you can close the system across the top of the pack which allows the the um, capacity of the, the pack to increase so if you're doing uh, say a long weekend and you call in and get some munchies and food or whatever uh, at a drop off point or a shop or whatever it may be the pack will expand to suit your needs and then as you eat it and whatever else you can then screw the roll top down and pull the, the, the tension back down on the, the side of the pack. So that's a nice double closure system which is, uh, which is very neat and very popular on certain packs. So let's come round to the back of the pack when you have all this fun happening. Okay, so first of all let's start with the, the uh, mesh system. Um, again it is the um, uh, air mesh back system but with a different patterning to allow for the more physical fast and light 
uh, person. It has the same um, Zephyr adjustable back system from large to small and just like the halogen it has the same range. So the back length for the small is down to 16 inches and large up to 21 inches which should cover most people. I've got it currently set right at the maximum because I was playing with it earlier on. Um, the shoulder harness is a bit special. Now this shoulder harness is the based on their Venture Racing series, obviously the Covalent Harness, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, not the thickest mesh in the world, the thick thickest padding in the world, the same for the hip belt, but there again, when you go lightweight, you don't tend to carry as bulky or heavy items. So consequently, you shouldn't really be needing as heavy padding. So if you compare that to the padding of the halogen, uh, which is obviously probably twice the thickness, uh, you can see that there is a definite um, difference to them. It's also perforated as well, you can see through the foam there, which obviously helps with perspiration and rain, etc, etc. The interesting part about the harness is it's, it's super adjustable that it will fit the male and female form equally well, but you can strap it down very tight. Uh, let's go back to this camera again. First of all, the shoulder harness itself has got two chest pockets, which has been very popular on their running vests. Um, good size pockets again. When you're wearing it, that's definitely mo big enough for a mobile phone. Um, some munches, gels, water, um, cuddly toy, I don't know, Did that sort of thing. Let's have a look at that again. So you can get a reasonable amount in here. Uh, there is a slight mesh on both pockets as well. So that enables you to uh, pack the pocket out tight. There's two chest braces. And the chest braces are fixed to a daisy chain here, which obviously makes them adjustable for different chests, uh, male and female. And they've got their quick release system, which clips in there. Now one particular feature on here uh, which has been referred to as a chest stash for walking poles is this particular clip here on the left hand side of the harness. Um, it would be suitable really if you were just resting for a moment and you wanted somewhere to stash your, your, your carbon poles, these type of things. Um, however, it's not that generous amount of shock cord and certainly you wouldn't be able to stash your poles and tuck them away at the base of the pole further down the harness down here somewhere um, securely. However, this is H2O obviously compatible with there's the hydration um, exit and as the pipe will be coming out down this side of the harness it would only be natural for it to tuck under the montane elastic there and then be caught by this shock cord. Personally, I think that would be a quite a good way of doing it because then your hydration slot would come from, from your neck down this harness but it would be tucked out of the way here. Whereas if you did it on the other side of the harness, it would come down to the daisy chain and get caught up in the daisy chain and you'd be forever having the pipe bang against you if you're running or moving fast or whatever. So personally I think I would use that um, elasticated uh, attachment probably more for hydration than for poles. But I'll pop the rucksack on in a minute and we'll see how it fits. Um, so coming back to the hip belt, um, as I mentioned before, not the thickest hip belt in the world but certainly will hug you tight and their attachment and, and uh, hip waist, sorry, the waist attachment system. You can see there this pocket, the wand pocket, which is on both sides of the pack, is really quite something. It does pull round. So you pull the waist belt tight and you still have access to the wand pocket as well on both sides. Uh, a lovely simple design but in practice um, fantastic, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. So fair play to the designer for 
developing that. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see more of that design later. Um, what else now? I think that's probably covered most of that. Let's go back to the top of the pack and go inside it. Let's take out Rose's pillows because I'm not sure she'll want to sleep tonight. So, it's a big bag. It's very large inside there. Let me just pop the other camera on. Camera rucksack cam. I don't know if you can make anything out there. There's enough light. Let me just, sorry about this. There we go. Try that. It's a big bag. There's a lot of space in there. And consequently, I could see the reason that um, a lot of people have got excited about this for overnighters and such and long weekends. What it does have, interestingly, is a nice little zipped security pocket. So for those people that are a little bit concerned about losing a top pocket, which is a very British, uh, <laughs> a British problem, I think, losing the top pocket, um, there's something to give you a little bit of confidence there. There's a zip pocket which you can stash your car keys in, and obviously, as I say, there's the key fob as well uh, to, uh, to keep everything secure and easy access. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can say. Oh yes, there is one other thing. On both rucksacks, there is a removable stay, which is here. And that runs down the spine of the rucksack. Now, you can remove it. I'm not going to, because it's a little bit of a fiddle to get it back in, because the adjusting shoulder harness has to it, it run through a channel in the shoulder harness system. So if I take it out, it will go back in, but it takes a bit of a fiddle, and I don't want to do that now in the video. But another way of saving a bit of weight, if you don't want a, um, a metal structure going down the back, or if it troubles your back shape in any way, um, and also if you were perhaps taking the pack and going abroad and wanted to stuff it in your holiday luggage and just roll, roll the pack up, if you took the stay out, it would be, uh, be a lot smaller. Uh, and once again, they've got the nice little Velcro tab there for holding up the hydration. So, all in all, I think this is a lovely, lovely pack. And I can see it really um, being extremely popular in the marketplace. The reason I can see that happening is price more than anything else. The features on it are fabulous. And they're the type of features that you generally don't find on British design packs, in all honesty. Uh, they tend to be more American packs uh, or uh, overseas um, cottage manufacturers, shall we say. And so you're looking at this pack on the high street at full retail is around the £100 mark, just under £100. And the halogen is 115 So when you compare that to similar featured American packs, shall we say, you're looking at almost twice the price for an American pack, particularly with the exchange rate the way it is these days. So I think Montana are onto a winner with, uh, with this particular pack for the lightweight people, or people just want to be generally lighter and still be comfortable. Um, it's, it's definitely something worth considering. From a capacity point of view, um, I would say probably, I wouldn't want to carry more than 12K, 13K in this. Um, I, I do, with, the, with the padding on the, shell, on the shoulder harness and that sort of thing, I don't think it's... But it's not really designed for that. If you're going lightweight, your stuff's lighter as well. You're taking less. So I would have thought, you know, you'd be hovering around the sort of 8 to 10 kilos, ideally, with this. With this one, with a bit more padding, the halogen, I think you'd probably be getting up to more at 12K, probably pushing it to 15K. But there again, it is a 45-litre pack. You wouldn't want to overfill it anyway. And particularly with Duke of Edinburgh uh, or family, young family members, the advice is always never to carry more than 20% of your body weight. So um, the number of youngsters that we see around here doing Duke of Edinburgh is horrendous seeing them carrying 65-litre packs. It's ridiculous. They should be carrying stuff like this. Uh, so as I say, £115, £100, it's a bargain. So I'm going to have a look at the chat room and see what Gary's been saying and see if there's anything I can add at all. Um, maximum back length, length Kecha is uh, 21 inch. 21 inch is the maximum back length on both packs. Um, see the pack on, yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Right, let me put the pillows back in and give it a bit of shape. Make it a little bit more attractive. We want it to look a little bit more attractive, don't we? Just looking back into rucksack history, this was 15 years ago when Golight brought out their first range of packs designed by Ray Jardine. Their features were really, really minimal and they were extremely popular packs. What's happened in the last 15 years is that materials have advanced, the, techno the technology and the materials have advanced and obviously uh, the design side of packs have improved as well, which have resulted in not only lighter packs such as this, but actually packs which are quite tasteful to, to look at and wear as well. So I've got it set at the 21 inch mark, which is the longest back length. Uh, let's change cameras to that one. The chest harness is the twin quick release, which is very simple. It just goes on and then just pops off like that. Elasticated, of course. Pull it in tight, and there's two, or well, there's one tab, but there's a loop to the tab, and it pulls in two different places. I think. Yeah, it pulls in two different places on the side of the pack here, um, which is quite nice. Let me just see if I can use the camera there. There you go. So it pulls in two different places, which brings it really nice and tight to your back exactly where you want it, which is really good. And as I say, this wand pocket is fantastic. So I now have access, where are we? trying to watch the camera, <laughs> hold the camera and do it at the same time. Bear with me a second. I have got it here, there it is. So I can access the whole of this pocket, which is fantastic. What the size of that? That's brilliant. And that's over and above the traditional pocket, which is just above, which I can't quite reach. I can just reach it. So, as I was saying, the one pocket is here. And you can get in there and reach it. But it's a nice looking pack. And you've got access, as I say, to these shoulder pockets as well. Let's uh, get the other camera out. Shoulder pockets as well there. do on the run, the same on that side as well. I can't quite do it left handed. There we go. So uh, here we go. Right, any other questions? What chest size, Borgia? Borgia, good question. Um, Borgia, good question. Uh, what chest size? Well, I'm a 42 to 40 inch chest, and this is it. There's still, there's still that much stretch. Where are we? Do that side. There's still that much stretch left. So I'd say, could these go to a 48? 48, 50 inch chest perhaps. And certainly there's the plays there in it and it's not, it's not, the elastic's not under a great amount of tension. Um, it's more the waist really. The waist is the same as the halogen pack, uh, 32 inch to 46 inch, but a 46 inch waist would be quite big for something this, this uh, light. 
Uh, so I would think more sort of around the 32 to 36, 38. Obviously, it's come from the racing snake fraternity, so it's designed for people who are generally of slimmer form. Um, okay, well, I think, I think that's it as much as I can go through. If there's any other questions that people have um, or anything they'd like to see now while it's sort of on camera, I shall certainly do my best to, to show you. But I think Gary's answered most of the technical questions. Um, and Yep, I think Gary's answered most of the questions. So, I just want to say thanks everybody for joining me on the live stream. Sorry about the confusion at the beginning and sorry about the sound halfway through. Uh, would you believe the batteries went flat on the radio mic? Uh, I've checked everything today apart from the batteries. Uh, but we are done, we are completed. It's our first live stream. Uh, if it's been of interest, if you're watching this afterwards on YouTube, on playback, do tell me if it's been of interest to you because we have lots of products that we can actually do this to. Uh, we can go outside and uh, show you tents and shelters and tarps and cookers and all sorts of things. So uh, if live streaming is of interest and you like what you see, then hopefully we can improve on it and take it a stage further um, next time. So until next time, folks, thanks very much for watching. And I'm going to say bye for now and stop the stream.